Hi there, and welcome to One Meal and a Tasting Masterclass. So today I want to give you some practical tips on what you need to do. So first things first is one of the most important things that you're going to learn is to make sure that you eat on a level one or a level zero. So If you haven't picked up my book, Waste Away, I suggest that you do that because there's going to be lots of stuff in there that you need to know. But let me just do a quick recap. So what is a hungry, hungry hippo? Hungry, hungry hippo is starving, ravenous, weak, grouchy. All you can think about is what to eat and how you can get it. You might get a headache. You might get hangry. That's a zero. A level one is that your stomach is growling. You know that you are completely on E. You can physically hear your stomach growling and feel an empty sensation. There are a few people who don't feel they don't have their stomach growl, but they really are on E. But I would say the majority of them, 95% of the people do hear their stomach growl when they're hungry. So try, try, try to make sure that your stomach is actually growling before you eat your first meal. Make sure that when you're at level one, that it's not just that your stomach is growling because it's digesting the food from before, right? It's an empty sensation. Be sure that it's growling because it's empty. Everything sounds good to eat at this point of hunger. Level two is you're hungry. You're starting to think about food. Certain things sound good to you. You're deciding what your body is craving. A level three is you're not really hungry. You're not really full. You're kind of neutral. Four is you're satisfied. And that's where you always want to end your meal. And five is stuff that's uncomfortably full. So you never, you want to try to, the goal is to try to eat when you're at about a 3.8, 3.9, right? And at the most get to level four where you're satisfied. Even though I say that you can choose your meal, either breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner for your tasting, then, you know, It's just that breakfast is the easiest meal for people to give up. I'd like for you to try that when you're starting this to go the longest that you possibly can in the day without eating breakfast and then go as long as you can without eating lunch and then have your first tasting. One of the most controversial things that I hear people talk about with intermittent fasting is coffee. So coffee is going to help you. And I will tell you this. When I interview people who are thin and that have been thin their whole life, almost all of them, I would say a good 70 to 80, maybe even 90% of them did have one or two cups in the, of coffee in the morning with a little bit of cream. And just a couple of them had a tiny bit of sugar or they had stevia or they had monk fruit. With that being said, Do the absolute best that you can to see if you can have your coffee black or have it with the tiniest amount of cream and try to get off the sugar altogether. That is the goal. But if you say, I can't do it, start here and we'll talk about the crutch drinks later. So, but do the very best you can to have black coffee or without any cream at all. But if you have to have a little bit of cream, We'll deal with that later. Let's just get you started. Now, remember, you're not taking one bite of food until you're sure that you've reached a level zero or a one. Some people get there at 11 o'clock. Some people get there at 12 o'clock. But I will tell you, the thinnest women that I interview, they will have their coffee with a little bit of cream or they'll have black coffee. And they try to push it their first tasting to about two o'clock. So if you can push it that long, go ahead and do that. If not, do it when your body is physically hungry, make sure you're at a level zero or one and go as long as you can. One of the things that my friend Catherine always says, and she was a Miss Virginia and has a perfect, perfect body. And she says that she loves the idea with being hungry. She gets hungry excited to be hungry. Like being hungry is not the end of the world, right? So it's like, people are like, oh, I'm hungry. Great. So you've got to change your mindset to being like, this is the best thing ever. I'm hungry. Not, oh, I'm so hungry. 
And one of the lies that the devil is going to tell you is that if you don't have a little something in the morning, that you won't be able to have a great day, that you won't have the energy to have to, you won't have the stamina for the day. If you're not hungry, you shouldn't be eating something. Now, like I said, as you get more advanced, I love to change things up. And instead of having lunch and dinner, maybe move it to breakfast and lunch. But I will say out of all the women I interviewed, almost all of them chose a tasting around two or three, and then they ate again at around six o'clock. So sometimes seven just depends on when they had dinner. I had a friend of mine, her name's Kristen, and her husband kept nagging her about how important breakfast was. And she'd never had a weight problem, always was thin. And she said she started adding a smoothie every day in the morning because he was making one and he was like, you really should start your day with a smoothie. And so even though she wasn't hungry, she was like, okay, I guess I'll try it and started having a smoothie. She gained about five pounds in less than a month. Okay. First of all, the thing with smoothies, you have to be very careful because smoothies can have, you know, a lot of calories depending on what you're putting in there. So maybe the smoothies was probably somewhere in the 400 to 600 calories. And it wasn't, the main thing is not the calories. It's the fact that she was eating breakfast when she wasn't hungry. And so she wasn't doing the intermittent fasting. So of course she's going to be gaining weight because now she was eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and having a smoothie when she wasn't hungry from listening to her husband. Now, he said, you should really have something in the morning, and boom, she gained five pounds in less than 30 days. So there you go. A friend of mine who owns a farm, she says that her farm workers start working around 4 a.m., and they end up eating around 9 a.m., well, if you think about it, of course they're hungry at 9 a.m., right? Because they've already put in five hours of work. So if you think about you, let's say you wake up at 7 a.m. and then you maybe work out. I work out every morning and I work out on an empty stomach and I work out in a fasted state. But just because they, you know, they work, they might have ate at 9 a.m., but guess what? They started working at working at 4 a.m. and they'd already been working for five hours, right? So if you work, let's say you get to work at 9 a.m., then five hours later, that's one o'clock. Yes, you're going to be hungry. So again, it depends on when do you start your day. For me, I actually... For me, I actually get up around 4 or 5 a.m., but honestly, I don't eat usually until noon, sometimes 1, sometimes I wait till 2 to have my first tasting. One of the most important things for you to do, which I'm terrible at, I'm not even going to pretend that I'm good at. This is one thing that I'm going to teach you how to do. I talk about it in my book, Waste Away, but guess what? I am terrible at it. This is such a struggle for me. I watch my thin eaters. I watch how well they do on eating slowly, but it turns out that taking our time to actually enjoy a meal does make it taste better. Our mouths are structured to have like a strong whiff of the food's aroma. And it's really important that we don't just scarf the food down and we'll lose how great that is. We have over 10,000 taste buds in our mouth and I love to take big bites and I literally sometimes swallow without even tasting anything because I don't know what it is, but I've trained myself to do this. And so I literally have to untrain myself to do this. So now what I have to do is try to cut my food into small bites, chew for about 20 minutes, set a timer on my phone and try to take a full 25 minutes to eat. Now, this is one of the most painful things you're going to do, but it really, really helps. So for me, one of the things that I do that makes it a lot better is I might eat, take a couple bites of food and then I push it away. I take a couple bites of food and then push it away. And then in between eating, I might take a five or 10 minute break flat in the middle, completely push it away. And then sometimes I might say, I'm full. I don't want anything else. 
And then sometimes I might say, you know what? I do want a couple more bites. So one of my favorite foods is pistachios. So I sometimes get the pistachios that are already shelled and I would literally take a whole mini package, open it in half and put the whole thing in my mouth. And before I knew it, I would take like, or I'd put it in my hand, take a bunch, put it in my hand, take a bunch. So now I do two things. I try to take, I try to buy the pistachios that I have to open the shells myself. So I'll open up one, put it in my mouth. I hope I find a salty one. I take my time. I look for one that is easier to open. So it's like, I'm really elongating this process. But if I buy the ones that are already shelled, again, I want to take one, put it in my mouth, slowly chew it, put it around your whole mouth, making sure you're experiencing the whole taste, the whole flavor. I have to remind myself all the time that there's no teeth in my stomach. I literally have to make sure that my food is, it's almost like melted and mushy before I swallow. It's kind of weird, but it's true. So how many people do you know that eat one pistachio, then put it down and get another one? Most people just grab them and take a ton at a time. But one of the things that I can do is get very out of control with nuts. Like I would eat a cup or two cups of nuts, which is way too many nuts and way too many calories. And you don't need that much. You've just gotten used to eating so much and so much of excess. So there's two tricks I want you to make sure that you do for eating slowly. The number one is to set a timer. So what I'll do, you can see, I'll just set my timer and I literally have to watch it. So I'll go, okay, I'll take a bite. I'm telling you this is painful, but this is what I'll do. I'll take my timer, set it and just watch it go down to teach myself that I have to take this long to eat. Back to my friend, Catherine. This is what I realized. She eats because I timed her. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff I do for fun. So what she does is every time we've gone to a restaurant, she'll eat a couple bites. She talks. She takes a couple more bites. And after about the eight to 10 minute mark, she literally takes a break from the food and pushes it away. And it's so hysterical because what will happen is every time I go out to eat with her, the waiter will come by and say, ma'am, are you finished eating? Because it looks like she is because she's pushed it away from her. And she kind of sits back in her seat and she puts her fork down. And so she'll eat a couple more bites and then she'll push it away again. And the waiter will come back and be like, okay, I can take that. And she says, no, I'm not finished eating yet. And then, and it's not usually until the fourth time until it's literally been about 25 minutes. It almost always takes her, sometimes it takes longer. I've been at, to dinner with her. She's always the last one to eat and she always takes at least 25 minutes. And the reason why she says she does this is because it takes about 25 minutes for your body to register that you're full and that you're satiated. So the other piece is to look at being full is not the same as being satiated. This is so important. I always tell the story of my friend, Allie, and it's in my book, Waste Away, but I'm going to tell it to you now. We went to Uno's for a, an event and I never get pizza, but for that one time, I made the decision that I was going to get pizza. I got a little pan pizza, one of the small ones, and she decided to get a grilled chicken salad. So she got this grilled chicken salad and because she, not because she really wanted pizza, but she thought I'll get the healthier option. And so she ended up eating her entire salad. And as soon as I was done, I only ate half of my pizza. And when I was done, she said, are you going to finish that pizza? She said, I really wanted the pizza, but I decided to get the salad because I thought it was a healthier option. Well, guess what? After you look at how many calories she ate in that salad, because it was like a grilled ch chicken Caesar salad, that was like a thousand calories. And then she ended up eating half of my pizza. So instead of just getting the pizza and eating half, 
she ended up getting the grilled chicken and the pizza. Why? Because there's two parts of the equation. Listen, I am a math major. I have my degree in math. And guess what? There's two parts. Here it is. It's the satiety. Am I satiated? And then am I full? So she was full from the salad, but she wasn't satiated. She really wanted the pizza. And you have to always make sure that you get something that you know that you're going to feel satisfied. Uh, I'll give you another example. Now, I do always try to pick the healthier option if I want it. So like if I decide to get pizza, I'll get a cauliflower crust pizza. For me, that's just as good. I feel like I'm eating pizza. If they have a vegan cheese, I'll get that. That makes me feel like I'm getting something. So if I want Mexican, I'm going to get Mexican. Now I might pick a healthier option, but if I really want something, I'm going to get it and I'll have a few bites of it and then I'll be done with it. The other thing that is so important is that you don't drink during your meals. And I'm going to talk about this later, but you want to make sure you keep yourself really hydrated when you're not eating your meals. But during your meals, you do not want to do this. And I'll talk about this more later. Now, remember this, people who have food issues The devil is going to tell you lies over and over again. Some of the lies they're going to say is breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It will make sure that you have enough energy for the day. I've always heard that you should at least eat three meals a day, or I really feel like I should clean my plate because there's starving kids in China, or I should always save the best for last. I should eat my veggies first. I've heard that if you skip meals that you'll end up gaining more weight if you don't have enough food and your body will go into starvation mode. So again, these are all lies. I need some sugar. That'll give me a quick boost of energy. This is, I want you to say this sentence to yourself. Even if you think it's super healthy or it's low calorie, if you're eating when you're not physically hungry, you will end up putting weight on. Let me say that again. Even if you think it's super healthy or it's low calorie, if you're eating it when you're not physically hungry, you will end up putting weight on. Learning and understanding your hunger scale is one of the most important things that you will do and learn. And remember, Catherine says, I love when I'm hungry. I love when I hear my stomach growl because when I hear my stomach growl, I know my body is eating its own fat. I want to give you one more example of the balance between eating healthy and getting what you want. How This is how I eat chips and guacamole at a Mexican restaurant. I love guacamole, but I have to be careful with it because I tend to eat too much of it. So what I have to do with the guacamole, I always have people with me and I always get enough to share. But when we get it, I take maybe two or three spoonfuls of the guacamole. And then I always ask the waiter if they have cucumbers and they'll slice it up for me. They always do. They always have. And then I use the cucumbers and dip them with the guacamole. And then I might take two, maybe four chips and eat that with some salsa and guacamole. I love the cucumbers. I don't feel deprived having the cucumbers and the guacamole. I think that's great. They have a crunch. I love it. It's super healthy. I'd much rather putting that, I would much rather be putting that in my body than the chips, but I might want a little bit more of a crunch. So I might eat a couple of chips. Okay. Now I want to talk with you about being obsessed with food and dieting. One of the things that's really important is to make sure that I'm not constantly thinking about food, reading about food, shopping for food, preparing, and constantly thinking about food all the time. I have to ask myself what I really want. Like, what do I really, really want? It's like that song, you know, what do I want? What do I really, really want? I'm a terrible singer, so I won't sing for you. But I do this because I know if I'm going to crave something else and I don't get what I want, I'm going to end up eating more. 
So my son is a perfect example of this. If he doesn't absolutely love something that we give him to eat, he just won't eat it. I've seen it over and over again with all of my thin friends, but this is so important. I can tell you another story with one of my friends that she got a grilled chicken salad that was really plain. And she said, none of this and none of that because she wanted it to be super healthy. I got the chicken fajitas, which I love. And she really wanted the chicken fajitas, but she decided against it. I ended up eating about a third of the fajitas and she ate her salad and the rest of my fajitas because she wasn't satisfied. So be careful. But you also do want to balance it. They all, thin eaters always balance whether they should get something or not. I'll give you an example. There's an Italian restaurant here called Aldo's and they have a dish called shrimp gorgonzola. It is so good, but you can just get the shrimp as an appetizer and it doesn't have the pasta. So the pasta, the main dish has the shrimp plus the pasta, or you can order it as an appetizer and you can just get the shrimp. And that's what I normally do. And guess what? That totally satisfies me. I don't need to, if probably if I would get the pasta, I would be satisfied as a probably a level nine or a 10 because I love that so much. But at the end of the day, I don't really, really need it. I was just as satisfied having that shrimp gorgonzola. I want to talk about hunger and fullness. You have to get in tune with your body and ask, how hungry am I? How full am I? This is the only way you're going to successfully lose weight with intermittent fasting. When you learn how to evaluate true hunger, you're going to discover that you don't need to eat as much food or as many meals as you think. So my suggestion is that the thinnest women that I meet with, they eat either one meal or a meal in a tasting. For the majority of the time, they have one meal in a tasting. The time where they only have one meal is usually when they go out to eat and they had a lot of food. They got to a level four on the fullness scale, maybe even a 4.1, and that sustained them for the whole day. I want to give you a story of Edna and Nona. Edna had the egg, E for Edna. Nona had nothing for breakfast. So we had two sisters, and they decided that they were going to eat the exact same amount of food. They were going to eat the exact same thing. And one sister had one hard-boiled egg and a half a piece of sprouted grain toast every day. Even though she had said she wasn't going to eat anything for breakfast, but she had convinced in her mind that she needed a little something. Well, Nona had nothing, and that sister lost about three and a half to four pounds that week, but they ate everything the same for lunch and everything the same for dinner. And the sister Edna said, she had the audacity to say, I knew I wasn't going to lose weight eating the tacos that I ate and fajitas that I ate that week. And the sister who lost the weight ate the exact same thing. And when I asked her, why did you eat the hard boiled egg and the toast, half a piece of toast every day? She said, well, I just felt like I needed to eat something small in the morning to make it through the day. Her response was the boiled egg only had about 80 calories and the half a piece of bread only had 50 calories plus a little bit of butter. So it was between 150 and 200 calories. And she didn't think it was that big of a deal. Well, it was a big deal because her sister Nona had lost the full three and a half, four pounds. 